Hello and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire Nicchiarico and today I'd like to share with you more of the information that's come from the 25th dimension in my last hypnosis session. And today we will be focusing on the world of Tartaria. There are books written about our history, hidden history, because this is not part of the mainstream history that's taught in schools. And many people are wondering, since there are physical signs that cannot be explained by the current historical narrative, if this was a real civilization or not. And there is a lot of interest around this concept. I'm very curious about it as well, because the concept of Tartaria also ties in with the fact that they were giants walking the earth, very, very advanced people. And also the fact that there have been mud floods that have emptied out cities or new cities or relatively new cities have seemed to sprung out of nothing of thin air that were completely empty. These are cities that could house millions of people and there was nobody in the streets. So there are pictures of this where they look like uh, white elephants, meaning uh, white elephant is a term used for, for example, a, an industrial complex or that's born in the middle of the desert, there's nothing around it. And so there are stress buildings. And uh, so there's a lot of interest around this, especially because there have been several videos made about these concepts, everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. So I figured I'd ask the 25th dimension. So please, before we move forward, uh, like and share this video if you can. And also uh, please leave me a comment to let me know if it resonates and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, because this really helps me make more videos. All right, let's jump in. When I say Carolyn, I'm referring to my hypnotist who's asking the questions. And when I say me, I'm referring to myself under hypnosis. So it's really the information is coming from the 25th. Carolyn. So was the civilization of Tartaria real? Me. Tartaria civilization. Um, Tartaria, I'm sorry, and this is the transcript, sometimes speech to text uh, <laughs> leaves a lot to be desired. Tartaria was more than a civilization. It was an era. So it was an era of this planet when we allowed a lot more. We had less rules. We allowed a lot more of our real essence to come through. So things were very easy for us. We used thoughts to create things. We were very close to our true essence. What we're going to experience on new earth. A new earth is gonna be 1000 times more powerful, but that was the principle. But we let go of that because we didn't believe in this game well enough. We really wanted to deepen our experience of the game. So we removed a lot of the rules that were going on in Tartaria so that things could become more interesting for us. Now, from a 3D perspective, they seem more challenging. Like you are doing now a lot of work that you weren't doing before. This is not just because of the challenge, because we needed a challenge. It's simply because we want to slow down time. We wanted to slow down, isolate things, to see them almost like image by image clip, as opposed to having something pop up in front of you in a split second, which is how things work when we create them from thought. So while it has turned out to be a lot of work and a lot of suffering in this sense, a lot of people believe that we needed the suffering. We never needed the suffering. We were never after the suffering. The suffering did not add anything to our evolution. We simply wanted to slow things down to examine them closer. It's almost like stopping time. We've been able to watch a frame out of a movie much more closely, but it ended up being a painful experience for a lot of people. For example, the people who have to physically now create these constructions that we used to create from thought. I want to comment on this because there's a lot of this, I call it the, the drum, uh, drum roll or the hoopla in, uh, in uh, new spirituality, in, uh, in uh, new age spirituality, where they tell us that suffering is value adding. So it is only through suffering that we learn, we evolve as souls. 
the 25th has repeatedly said to me that that is not true. We are not after suffering. Suffering adds no value to us. In fact, we're here to have fun and suffering kind of dampens that, doesn't it? Uh, it's not, uh, suffering just happens because we slow things down. And so when you, because we wanted to isolate things, look at them much more carefully. And uh, because of that, of course, there's a lot more effort that's required now to create everything and therefore that causes suffering. Also because the game has been unbalanced, so a lot of people are suffering because nobody's really having fun in this unbalanced game. Uh, it's unbalanced towards the dark uh, reality that we have now. So because we're not having fun, of course, we have pain, we have suffering. That's why we're taking this entire game now because it's not fun anymore. So people have come to believe that the suffering itself is value adding and we were actually seeking it so that we could learn. When the 25th talks about us being here in a game reality, basically, they're saying that it's not, uh, uh, we're just here to entertain ourselves, to distract ourselves. We are still all ascended masters simply playing a game where we pretend to forget all the rules that take us too close to home, too close to our all powerful reality. And therefore we like to do things the hard way, uh, in a slower way, because we want to believe that this is real. That's why you create rules in a game so that you stay, you, you suspend this belief, you, you stay in that game. It's like when you watch a movie, you know, if you start dissecting the movie, you realize it doesn't make any sense. But while you're in the movie, you kind of forget reality and you just get absorbed in the story. That's all we're doing here. But uh, this concept of suffering has been, has been introduced, I believe, by the dark uh, because um, it was a concept of this is a concept that's inherited or really transplanted directly from uh, religion where, where they're telling us that you're supposed to suffer and suffering is a good thing. You martyr yourself, you, you sacrifice yourself. That's a, that's a way to keep us down because our power comes from our connection to our pleasure and our joy and our full acceptance of who we are. So suffering, it's a very useful tool to uh, make us not listen to ourselves and what we need because we feel so good for being, we feel good for being uh, for sacrificing ourselves for being martyrs. And, uh, and I could go on and on about this. I'm sure you can think of a million examples in our life where we're told that suffering is good, which doesn't mean we don't learn anything from suffering, but the whole concept of learning, it's not that we are learning new things because we have to learn things because our souls don't know these things. It's, uh, it's experiencing here. It's an experiential uh, playground where we want to experience different things. Because I mean, how boring would it be if you just uh, uh, tried one flavor of ice cream all the time? So we want to try all the flavors of ice cream. Doesn't mean that we have to try flavors of ice cream that are just completely disgusting, okay? There are so many good flavors of ice cream, why don't you try that? In fact, the 25th uses a different analogy later on, you'll see where they say it's a lack of imagination when you have to go to bad things to think that that's how you need to entertain yourself. Otherwise you're gonna get bored. So there, there's so much to say here. So I'm just gonna keep going. Otherwise this video is gonna be super long. Carolyn, so essentially to slow things down, that's why this was hidden from us, the history of Tartaria. Me, we all decided on that one. We decided that we were too powerful. It was too close. It was too close. It wasn't that interesting, that game, because it was too close to what we had. We already know we can do. So yes, we slowed it down so that we now feel we're so far away. I mean, again, we feel we're so far away that some of us believe that there is no God. So in that sense, it has really worked well. We have believed. And the whole point of proposing each team, the light team and the dark team, propose different ideas to the public. And this idea of slowing things down was proposed to us and we accepted it. Carolyn, was it ended by a mud flood? Me. There have been several mud floods throughout history. Not several as in tens or hundreds, but several as in more than one. So a few, let's say. And yes, they were ended that way. So in some ways, we all agreed to them for some of them. What happened is that at some point, the light team, because we were falling behind, we decided to use a mud flood to give ourselves a new start. 
And unfortunately, they gave an idea to the dark team. So they started using mud floods to reset us. And so we ended up always, they always ended up ahead and this became darker and darker. So this is why at this point, the light team, yeah, we've all decided we're going to take this down. But basically the light team realized, we realized that things weren't going to be able, that we weren't going to be able to fix this. These little compensatory acts that we were doing with these mud floods and resets weren't really working. We weren't really changing what was happening here. We always somehow ended up in a darker spot. So this wasn't really a happy ending in any way. We weren't able to recalibrate. That's the problem. We were not able. It was a lack of imagination on the side of the dark as well, because even within the game, they should have kept in mind not to go overboard. But unfortunately, a lot of things they did were not intentional. They made mistakes. They didn't think it would have the, it would cause the ripple effects that it has. We've all been caught unawares in that sense. That's why it's not that the light team lost and the dark team won. It's really, we got it screwed and we got to move on. They're referring to another question I had, which is the, the dark team won. Is that why they're ta we're taking this, uh, this game down? And basically they're saying, no, we all got screwed because nobody wanted the game to come down. So we've all tried to reset it, but it's just not working. We're, we're not able to salvage it. Carolyn, so we've gone through some resets on this planet. So when and why and how did uh, these happen? You explained some of that just now. In years, in a human's mind, how many times has this happened? And in what periods of time during Earth's existence did that happen? Me. This has happened five times. We've had five mud floods and resets. And we've discussed before, we've been here about 500 years total. The rest in, is these time resets we have experienced. Sometimes it looks like we're completely in a different civilization. That's how much we will reset time. We might cover everything in sand and all of a sudden it looks like we're starting we're in the Middle Ages and there's nothing. We don't necessarily always use mud to cover things. There is a lot of information below deserts, for example, that's been covered. So we've had five of these. Actually, this one person, I don't wanna name names because it doesn't really matter. This one person who's been talking about mud floods and there are a lot of people on the internet talking about mud floods. Uh, so this one person was correct in saying that there was one in the 1800s and she also was not wrong by saying that life was a lot easier before. She did say that we decided we were gonna reset because life was too easy. It wasn't actually us. This reset was done by the dark team because they wanted to, they wanted to change the rules again. And which is okay. We don't mind the changing of the rules. It keeps it moving. But we had already on the side of the light we had already decided to take this down sooner because it wasn't, already wasn't working anymore. We are always with a lack of, uh, we always have this lack of balance. So when everything gets reset, nothing gets put back. It always tends to go towards the dark, to lean towards the dark. This is not done, this is the problem of interpretation. This is not done because we need the darkness. This is done because it just so happens this reset was done by the dark and it is their game. It is their point to create these rules because they think they're fun, but then of course they don't account for consequences. And really truly in a way it's been them, their lack of imagination or their inability to predict consequences in our, from our side the light being unable to counteract so there has been, we've kind of screwed up together is the point. Carolyn, so then do these resets, are they designed to annihilate the whole population or are they designed to call the herd per se? Me. So 
This will be a little hard. It may be a little hard to understand. The calling of the herd is not necessarily a negative thing the way we think of it. When the dark says, let's go back to less people, they really just want to reconnect to a certain time of the past. Let's call it past. It's not really past. This is just how we are experiencing time here. So of course, that's also lack of imagination because that's not something that we would enjoy as a population now. The essences that are here, they wanna be here. So we don't want this calling to happen. This is why it does transfer and gets interpreted the way we do, which is, wow, that's bad. They're really evil. But the truth is that from a game perspective, they're just trying to recreate times where there were less people. Now, why is that? Because of course, if there are less people, they believe they're easier to control within the game. Remember, this is a game and it's part of the rules. They want to control big swaths of the population. So again, a game level, it makes sense. It's not necessarily an evil thing. It's just something that they've come up with. Of course, as you can see, that's not really working. They've been working at this for a long time. That's not really working. We're becoming more people, if anything. And that's because most people, a lot of souls, a lot of essences, have been wanting to be here for this event. So it was never going to work. When we decided to take this down, there was a much increased interest in human history. And a lot of essences have wanted to incarnate here in the past few hundred years. Carolyn, and I heard that through many sources. Are the mud floods the reason that there were lots of orphans after the last reset? Me, yes, some people were taken out. But remember, nobody can take you out. You have to decide to go. So a lot of people decided that they were going to go. And that's why you had a lot of orphans. Now the orphans, why were there a lot of them? Because a lot of souls were coming in wanting to be here. Carolyn, oh, understood. There is talk of another reset coming soon, but why would that happen? Me. It's not happening. That's how some people are picking up the fact that we're taking this down. Yeah, if you want to call it the ultimate reset, it is. But it's not a reset the way we've experienced before. It's not something that's happening here. Now, within the game, the dark wants to believe and has made it known that they're trying to reset because of whatever reasons we might know about, we've been told about, because they are evil and they need to control people. They only want 500 million on, the, on this planet. In reality, they know they're part of the game like we are. They know exactly what's happening. They know this is being taken down. So they are just manipulating that in the way that they usually do because they have to be in integrity with their own way of seeing things in this lifetime. So I hope this is, uh, I know it's a, it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, you have to know some of the background here about the light team, the dark team. If this is confusing, I highly recommend that you go back and watch some of these videos uh, with messages from the 25th because they do explain the background to a lot of this information. For example, the uh, fact that uh, we only have 500 years of history really here on this planet. Time is not the way we think it that doesn't work the way we think it works. Uh, the fact that the light and the dark are always buying for, uh, to, for collecting people's imagination. The fact that we can't predict everything uh, and so we make mistakes and so on and so forth. The fact that the dark has gotten ahead in the game and so we have a very unbalanced polarity on this planet, which is the reason why we decided to take it down because the game cannot be fixed anymore. There's a lot of background to this. So if you haven't watched the other videos, I would definitely recommend you go back and do so. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.